Susan Meeling, Reverend Susan Meeling, Reverend Meeling, Lady Dory Bell. I've been known by quite a few names. So, I felt like doing something a little different. And though um, I don't really know if I necessarily look like the uh, stereotypical any anything realistically <laughs> the stereotypical me i guess technically i look like a stereotypical me that's about it <laughs> so um however i i understand that um i probably don't look like well the I know I don't look like the stereotypical medically retired individual from the United States of America's armed forces. It doesn't matter which branch. Um, I know that for a fact. I've been very much informed that. Um, I've also been informed that I don't look like the stereotypical scuba diver, despite the amount of certifications I've earned. Um, I also don't look like the stereotypical well realistically anything and anything at all other than you know i'm human but um i i just i've been very much informed i don't look like the stereotypical of anything or anyone <laughs> so i felt like doing something different i had planned on doing this before essentially going and trying to work on the website thing, my website, www.susanmealing.com, had a few issues. Then again, I have issues with technology, so, and it's not, a, and it's not offense towards anybody that does technology stuff, or any of that. It is just, oof, I, I, it, I had problems with technology before winding up in Washington State, coming back to the state of Texas, <laughs> that didn't change. <laughs> that didn't that didn't change with the exception of it being more painful to deal with. That's that's about it. That's 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 basically um my personal issue. It was a, it was painful to touch technology stuff beforehand. Yes, I know the dichotomy of using e-cigarettes now. However, <clears throat> um after what occurred in Washington State, um, number one, winding up there. Not that it's not a, <laughs> not that it's not a pretty state. It's a very beautiful state. Um, however, for me, um, it, it, the, there's a lot of techie stuff there, and you know it is kind of, at least in my opinion, you know you got the capital of the United States of America when it comes to like Washington D.C. Obviously. But as far as, you know, capital of techie, techie, techie stuff, I kind of think that, like, Washington State, specifically Seattle, is probably the um, capital of the United States of America for the techie, techie, techie stuff. That's probably not the most proper wording, but it's what I got. So... I, I understand there are other words for it. I just techie stuff is what I'm gonna leave it. I used to be really good at technology. Oh, I used to be so good. Like prior to my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, and that whole medical stuff, the stuff I could do with technology. Oof. Ooh. I mean. <laughs> And I'm not just talking about, like, video games or anything. I'm talking, I could code like a motherboard. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I had, I had the ability when it came to, I was, uh, my first computer that I worked on was a DOS. The, you know, the IBM DOS, and so I had done a few things there uh, as far as coding, 
and then I learned in school on an Apple Mac and then in and that was in elementary school and then in middle school was the first time I had ever worked with um, Microsoft so I had I learned a little bit of coding but for me it was just one of those I want to play outside <laughs> I want to go do that and you know computer stuff school and all but after being sick with what I was sick with in fifth grade it was when it was I'd rather be outside <laughs> I'd rather go play on the swing set and go I mean I was already the type of person who liked being outdoors anyway but which is kind of funny because there was a guy that I attempted to flirt with but apparently that was a massive fail because you know i had gone up to adam and i was like i think you're cute that was my way of flirting <laughs> i think you're cute and he's like i don't think we're compatible and i was like oh i mean we still talked and stuff and it was just one of those oh well you know that's cool that's fine you know <laughs> no big deal he was like, well, I, don't, I hope you don't think I'm talking about computers. Psst. No. <laughs> Why would I think that? <laughs> and, he, well, you know, computer stuff, yeah. <laughs> and that was, my, that was my way of flirting back, you know, before my head injury. I think you're cute. And then... <laughs> I don't think that's flirting though, apparently, because apparently what flirting is that I've read is not what flirting is. So I don't, I don't know. It, this stuff is weird in this era. I just kind of figured be like, hey, that, that, yeah, ta da. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I kind of figured. I do something different because I'm it's not really different for me in certain regards I've always been spiritual I've always been into studying religion and spirituality I have read the the amount of spiritual books that I have read over my lifetime I get it I was born in 1982 and this is 2020 but by the time I was 17 before I joined the military the amount of spiritual books that I had read in comparison to military books kind of were about half and half kind of yeah that's kind of ironic in that that regard however I'm gonna I'm gonna read a little bit from the Book of Mormon um, I, I haven't technically been baptized by the Mormon way although by the description of what I read about Mormon um, baptism, it's kind of like scuba diving. You know, you go into a body of water and, you know, <laughs> you're fully immersed and stuff. And when you go scuba diving, well, you can't really scuba dive without being fully immersed, I'm just saying. So I'm going to start off with the testimony of three witnesses from the Book of Mormon, written or compiled essentially by, well, a spiritual meeting with Reverend Joseph Smith. I mean, he did put a lot of it together, but he had inspiration in regards to several aspects as, as far as the wording is concerned to assist with that. I kind of think, like, and I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but I kind of, I kind of think that certain parts of, specifically the first two books I wrote, <laughs> Finding A Silver Lining and Finding B Silver Lining, not to be arrogant, but are kind of like the Old and New Testament in some regards, but in the more modern era. But mainly because of the repetition, the amount of repetition and stuff like that. Yeah. With the way, yeah, yeah. I mean, not just because of the, like, experiences and stuff like that, but just the amount of over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. 
so yeah but i've read a, a, a quite a few and that's that's before my head injury that's not even after my head injury after my head injury i've pretty much reread the majority of books that i had already read and then a few new ones although some of the new ones that i wound up reading which were older ironically um <laughs> depending on what you believe on spiritual stuff, especially since I'm about to read a book on this. Uh, I mean, you know, certain spirits were pretty cool to speak with. I'm just saying, there are some spiritual guys, or spirit, spirits that I got to speak with that were quite interesting. I, I mean, you know, for those into, like, space stuff, you know, <laughs> Nikolai Tesla's. <laughs> I would give them maybe there's some guys who would be like, you got to speak with whose spirit? Oh. <laughs> and no, not through a seance. I didn't need to have that. I had <laughs> You got to speak with Albert Einstein's spirit? <laughs> no fair. <laughs> I could be wrong. Get like, I mean, then like pre head injury, you know, Edgar Allan Poe, that was kind of cool to speak with it, uh, you know, and then Aristotle, that was a cool spirit to speak with. Plato was pretty cool to speak with. Then there was this other spirit, what was his name? Oh, <sighs> he did some. He did something where he made gas into a pill and like it could fuel a car and 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 he couldn't actually sell it because of the oil stuff. And yeah, like I got to speak with that guy's spirit. That was pretty cool. That was pretty head injury. That was pretty interesting. But anyway, so I'm going to go to the testimony of three witnesses before I go too far off. <laughs> I can do that. If you've watched my prior official videos, you can see how quickly. And if I've known you <laughs> over the years, well, you know. And, and if you've ever met anybody from New Jersey, well, then you definitely know. Um, <laughs> so the testimony of the three witnesses be it known unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people unto whom this work shall come, that we, through the grace of God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, had seen the plates which contain this record, which is the record of the people of Nephi, and also the Lamanites, their brethren, and also of the people of Jared, who came from the tower of which hath been spoken. And we also know that they have been translated by the gift and the power of God, for the voice hath declared it unto us, wherefore we know of a surety that the work is true. And we also testify that we have seen the engravings which are upon the plates, and they have been shown to us by the power of God, and not of man. And we declare with words of soberness that an angel of God came down from heaven, and brought and laid before the eyes that we beheld and saw the plates and the engravings thereon, and we know that it is by the grace of God, the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, that we beheld and bear record that these things are true, and is, it is marvelous in our eyes. Nevertheless, the voice of the Lord commanded us that we should bear record of it, wherefore to be obedient unto the commandments of God, bearing the testimony of these things. And we know that if we are faithful in Christ, we shall rid our garments of the blood of all men, and be found spotless before the judgment seat of Christ, and shall dwell with him with eternally in the heavens and the honor be to the father to the son and to the holy ghost which is one god amen oliver cowderly david whitmer and martin harris that is a testimony of the three witnesses now in certain regards you can i'll start from the bottom and go upward so um honor and and the irony in regards to the Trinity aspect is um, that realistically there is the Trinity which makes the one. And I've explained to many people over and over again that the most ideal way to raise a child 
is a three-prong approach. The Trinity. You know, you have the communities, you know, in conjunction with the parents, and then the school. Despite the fact that McCoy Elementary School made fun of me for that, the different teachers and staff members, they actually made fun of me for that. I was like, at McCoy, yeah, they made fun of me for that. Yeah, yeah. Dawn Rank thought it was hilarious. She just, ha, 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 ha. Oh, that's such an uh, I, idealistic approach. Okay. And, and yeah, oh, yeah. And, and then when it came to Tammy Hatcher, yeah. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then my ex in laws, yeah. Mm hmm. Biological family, yeah, that is what it is. So then apparently, you know, you got the neighbors in 736 that feel like tapping on the wall because there is a difference in the sound between the wall being tapped on and a cabinet being opened and closed. Just gonna throw that out there. Um, then in regards to um, the plates, so there's, there's kind of a few different aspects that could be looked at. In this modern era, the amount of tattoos I have, you know, that could be considered as one aspect. Um, and then there's also, realistically, when I had warned Old Tenant Presbyterian Church, do not remove Pastor William Tennant's coffin. Like, please don't. And the congregation didn't want to listen to me because, you know, what does a child know? It's just an old wives' tale. And, you know, no, 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 because I got made fun of. I got made fun of. So here, I'll give, a, I'll give an example because I have this carpet right here that I can use. So pretend that this white portion is where the, the casket was. And in Old Tenant Presbyterian Church in the center aisle, I would walk like this. And people would make fun of me because I didn't want to step on the... Um, the the casket I could feel the divot and in, in the <laughs> in the uh, in the in the center aisle and people made fun of me for it and I was like I'm telling you that it's not an old wives tale I'm telling you it is the reality and then they found out it was the reality and then you know they removed the casket which ironically Ironically, it was supposed to be kept there so that way the British during the Revolutionary War didn't desecrate the original pastor's marker or uh, casket and stuff. And instead, they did it anyway. And then they opened it and there were all these engravings all over the exterior and the interior. And it was just one of those, well, I guess I'll take a look. <laughs> because apparently, since nobody wants to listen to me anyway, I'll, and everybody else is more mesmerized by the, you know, the skeleton that's in there. I mean, realistically, there's so much, so many inscriptions. And so, you know, that is what it is. So continuing on. Um, I guess maybe, hypothetically, that was verified, like maybe. Some people were, when I wrote about it and then got the books, they were like, well, you know, like certain people, either they were from the area or they were able to find the information or know somebody who went there. And they were like, yeah, yeah, no, that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then gave some examples. Beyond what I had already written. And we're like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. Ever since that, that day, there have been certain things that have been occurring. Yepers. And then isn't it funny as far as, okay, so you've got the, 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 um, the people of Jared. <laughs> Is it, um, Miss Ivanka's husband named Jared Kushner? <laughs> There's an irony on that one, right? Right. And then the Lamanites and the Nephi. Yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. Kind of interesting with the different letters involved and stuff like that. 
So, and then, you know, then there's, in reference to the nations, you know, um, well, there's the United Nations. And then there's also the fact that when it comes to my books, all of them, is specifically in the, in the first ones that I wrote, I did have that ability because of the Amazon self-publishing thing. And so I was able to have the books go through wherever the treaties were for the business stuff. Mm -hmm. I did. I did that. I, I clicked all the boxes because I was, you know, why not? I didn't, I didn't think that, you know, there was anything in there that was realistically dangerous, per se, you know, in regards to my personal life experiences. I couldn't be the only person who had certain life experiences or were told certain aspects where other people could find certain ways to relate. And so, you know, it wasn't to cause problems, that's for certain. It was, it was to genuinely help. Not that, you know, law enforcement and, and all the elected officials don't know how to do that stuff, but it was just one of those, look, maybe there's a common ground you guys can go off of, you know, despite the different languages, tongues and stuff like that. And since, you know, they didn't have to realistically do the translation in regards to, um, you know, uh, the swear words, or the cursing and stuff like that, they were able to just read it simple. And that went for all of the eight original books I wrote, and also the books that I wrote since then. But yeah, I'm just one of those. Irony. So I'm gonna end on that, upload this particular video, and then go on to the next aspect of the Book of Mormon. But yeah, I have read quite a few spiritual texts over the years. So yeah, Old Tenet Presbyterian Church had a very large library. And every now and then, I got to go into Pastor McKenzie's office. I got to read some of his books. So I got to read some of his seminary books. And um, which we call it some of the military chaplain books of that time frame. And so yeah, I got to I got to read quite a bit when it came to spiritual stuff. Apparently, the people in Seven Thirty Six have some tappity tap tap tap. To <laughs> Whatever. Um, oh, and then the other aspects of the tablets. Then you can also take into consideration my Medal of Honor art project. That's the third one for like the Trinity aspect because of the way I I did it. I did it. I did do my Medal of Honor art project. <laughs> but also the the quotations, the prayers, and stuff like that. And so, yeah, you can take a look at that aspect of that kind of a trinity sort of thing. So, you guys have a good one. Subscribe, like, share to my, you know, official channel, my Rumi Link. Go to my website, www.susanmealing.com. Have a good one.